So today's reading is from uh, 146, Book 5, Anguti Aranikaya. Because, so this is about friend. Yeah, about friend. Because one should not take as a friend a bhikkhu who possesses five qualities. What five? He, he instigates work projects. He takes up disciplinary issues. He is hostile toward imminent bhikkhus. He is intent on lengthy and one, unsettled wandering. He is unable to instruct, encourage, inspire, and gladden one from time to time with a Dharma talk. One should not take as a, as a friend a bhikkhu who possesses these five qualities. So this is uh, directed to the monks uh, because the Buddha addressed bhikkhus. So bhikkhus, one should take as a friend a bhikkhu who possesses five qualities. What five? He does not instigate work projects. He does not take up disciplinary issues. He is not hostile toward imminent monk uh, bhikkhus. He is not intent on lengthy and unsettled wandering. He is able to instruct, encourage, inspire, and gladden one from time to time with a Dharma talk. One should take as a friend the bhikkhu who possesses these five qualities. <laughs> Interesting, huh? Yeah, so this is today's verse, five things. Yeah, the first one I thought is interesting. The rest are quite straightforward in a way. Uh, so the first one, he instigates work projects. <laughs> so meaning that in the Buddha's time, there are also those who like to start this project, start that project, you know. Yeah. So this is very interesting because in modern society, in modern times, uh, if monks don't start project, then people may think this monk will so come. Huh? <laughs> so come from this monk, just sit around, meditate, don't don't start any project. <laughs> so there's a verse, there's a phrase. Uh Yeah, that uh, the life of a monk, the monk should adopt uh, a life where uh, so there is less things to do. Uh, so, 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 so there are little things happening. So, less things to do, and then there is uh, less um, effort. And then there's less uh, steps to do. Should basically reduce why? So that you can go and meditate, you can go and reflect on the teachings. Yeah, don't <laughs> busy yourself with so much things. Yeah, so some of the Dharma classes I think should <laughs> does it come <count> inside? <laughs> ah, we have a uh, oh oh. I was going to introduce Sally. Oh, Sally is still here. Ah. Hello, Sally. <laughs> Say hello to Sally. Uh, welcome to our morning seat. How did you get to know about this uh, morning seat? Through the parent sessions on Sunday. Ah, I see. Okay. So she joined in the Hong Fa Tuan. Uh, the, the parents class yeah uh, okay so you you will notice that i wear a different uh, clothing uh, different robes <laughs> so uh, usually when i do formal classes uh, and in particular yeah then i wear the chinese robes so this is the Myanmar robe i was uh, in Myanmar for a while not a long time about three to three months Plus, yeah. Okay, so this is the, the text for today. Mm. Any questions? Uh, Marcel is not here to post question. How about uh, 
Uh, so for, uh -huh. I think Marcel has uh, one question in Slido which I read before. Uh -huh. He's asking Shifu why Shifu's teacher mm. uh, doesn't speak English but ended up in the US. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah. So why did my teacher end up in US? Because he was sent there. <laughs> yeah. So I think uh, if I don't recall wrongly, he, he spent some time in uh, Hong Kong. Yeah. Uh, I think. Yeah. In Hong Kong. And uh, then at some point, and he started giving teaching there. Yeah. Uh, and he was sent to uh, US to, to start a center there because there are a lot of Chinese who is actually in uh, US by then. Uh, actually, Chinese have been going to US for the longest time uh, since the early days of US um, development. Uh, but Chinese are rarely given credit for what they did. Yeah, For the longest time, Chinese were ostracized and then seen uh, described as the, the yellow peril and so on and so forth. But that's another thing altogether. Uh, what's interesting is he went to US in 1973. <laughs> so I ever told some students, I said, yeah, I was born in 1973, you know. So maybe, maybe I got born in the wrong place. Yeah, maybe I thought, ah, my sifu is going to be born. Uh, not it's going to be born. It's going to US. Okay, let me take rebirth in a place, uh, in that place. Then maybe during the rebirth process, go to the wrong place. Ah, this place got Chinese because my civil go there would be among would be in Chinatown area. Ah, the the Chinese here speak English. Okay, it should be correct. Tung. <laughs> eh? How come it's so hot at this place? <laughs> yeah, so my teacher was was uh, sent two of them. He and another monk was sent to US to start a set. Uh, a temple, yeah. So he started the temple, and uh, he was there until I think about in the. So he was there in nineteen seventy three. He left in the eighties. So he was there for maybe ten over years, yeah. And then um, my teacher shared with us a very interesting part, which is that uh, when he was there. Um, everything he received, all the angpao he received, he, he used it to build up the temple. But at the point when he was going to leave, the, 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 the community basically just say, okay, you gotta go, go. <laughs> yeah. And then he was having a bit of, a, he, this is what my teacher shared. Uh, he said he was having a bit of a, like, not struggle, but he was having a bit of passion. But should he ask for what he has like contributed or something? Because now he go out, then he has very limited resources. Man. Then he said that he had a dream. He dreamt of one Sim <laughs> oh. huh? He dreamt that one Sim told him, it's okay, leave those behind. It's okay, go. <laughs> so he said, yeah. Then in the end, what happened? Uh, so he started a center, then on his own, then uh, started, uh, uh, I think he then, and that was when he started on the Yoga Chara Mukhi Sastra, Yitya Um And um, at some point, <laughs> Because he come up with limited resource. Then at some point, he was left with so limited funds that he was going to go dry in like three months time <laughs> or something. Uh. And some of his uh, friend, monk friend, told him, don't be so stubborn. You know, you cannot survive in this way. Just give, just conduct classes. Just give teachings. You must uh, do chanting. <laughs> You must, you, you know, <laughs> yeah. 
And he was like, no, he wants to just focus on the teachings. So he wrote a letter to this elderly um, devotee. He's like a uh, very elderly devotee in Malaysia. This an ama uh, each kind of uh, uh, female devotee. So he wrote to her and basically just tell her that this is his situation. He's left with funds for a, like three months or something. Yeah, but he wants to focus on the teachings so that he don't have to uh, when ban fa hui, you know, ban fa hui, ah, uh, shit, instigate a lot of project, <laughs> have to do, have a lot of preparation and stuff like that. Then he, then he will be detracted from the dharma learning and teachings. And without a further word, the that old lady just sent him a check to help him pack through them. Yeah, so he is very grateful to this uh, old devotee. And when he she passed away, I I heard that. Um, when she passed away, he basically bring some of the disciples to go to his uh, go for a break and then do a service. Yeah, but even then, it's a very simple one. Just song sing sing da <laughs> can go. <laughs> yeah, not some grand or da 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 zu one. No. Yeah. So this is this is my teacher. And that's why <laughs> that's why I also tell my students very honestly, you you want me to do chanting uh, beyond sing sing da fei zhou, you wait long long. <laughs> because our monastery in the US, we only do sing sing da fei zhou. Yeah. Not that I, I can't do other chanting, but our focus is not on chanting. Uh, yeah. But at the same time, you have you must listen to the whole statement. Uh, I don't discourage people to do chanting also. Chanting is a very um, powerful practice. The trouble is um, two things. One, people do it without, um, without really doing it properly. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yo uh, Ho You If you think of chanting as a ritual, ritual, Ritual often means that it's the steps that is important. In Buddhism, the steps are not so important, really. The steps are really not so important. It's your, it's your mind set, your mind that is more important. You must do the chanting mindfully, and then, then it takes effect. Yeah. And even, even better, if you can understand the teaching while you do the chanting, that's even better. Yeah. But I don't say that you cannot do the chanting before you understand the, the sutta. Uh, but um, if better, you can understand it. Then the second thing about it is to think that chanting is an end by itself. Yeah. Then that's not very advisable. Chanting is not an end by itself. Yeah. Somehow this. Over time, not 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 today, but for, for I think decades and maybe even centuries, um, somehow we end up thinking that chanting is an end by itself. It's not an end by itself. Yeah. If chanting is an end by itself, then it will not be fa zhen dao. It will be yi zhen dao, nian song song jing. Yeah. Then it will be uh, not san xue, it will be yi xue, not jie ding hui. Yeah, then it will be just Song Jing. Yeah. Granted, granted, uh, you can in a way also say that chanting can lead to Tie Ting Hui. Yeah. For example, while you are doing chanting, you are maintaining body speech purity, right? Yeah. Um, and if you chant intently and mindfully, then your Thing is also somewhat developed. And as you read through the sutra, you are having the wen hui. Yeah, wen hui. But can you do si hui while doing chanting? Not possible. At least as far as I know, not possible. So in a way, if you do it really intently, very conscientiously, and very earnestly, you can do a preliminary si hui. 
but you're not chanting whole day, whole night. Right? Fair enough. So when you're not chanting, then your body and speech, what is guarding it? Yeah, that's why the Buddha still teach the precepts. Yeah. Because unless you are doing chanting like 40, seven, seven, seven days, 21 days. So during that period, harder for you to do anything that is harmful, right? Yeah. And if you do chanting for a, a duration, then your mind quietens. Then you start to develop some form of concentration. Yeah. But because you are still chanting, most for most people, your concentration doesn't go too deep. But in the in the text, yeah, or in the teachings, there is what you call photo sammei, right? Yeah, in for sammei, there is there is also sammei is samadhi, yeah. So there is also samadhi, yeah. Uh, but unless you can chant until like that, yeah, then the wisdom. It's also a preliminary one because at least you get the wen hui. That means just reading it, you have some knowledge. But for most people, for most of us today, just reading it is insufficient. We cannot remember. If you read but you don't remember, it's not wen hui. Yeah, it's just an impression, not, not strong. Yeah. Even when you attend Dharma talk, you cannot remember everything, right? So much less if you just do chanting. Of course, if you chant over many years, then you start to remember the words. But if you don't reflect on it, the words mean nothing. Right? Yeah, the words don't mean much. Yeah. Or if you never hear an explanation of the words that you have heard, sometimes you may draw the wrong conclusion also. Yeah. So I don't say that chanting is uh, a bad practice. It's a very wonderful practice. Yeah. But uh, it can help us, and it can help us with the preliminary tier thing. Yeah. But to be complete, we still need to do other, do more. Uh, so we should do chanting, but uh, not as an end by itself. Yeah. So if you visit our monastery in the US, uh, you'll find that we have limited chanting. Very limited chanting. Yeah. Every day is meditation and classes, meditation and classes. Okay, so just Amitabhu. He will meet again, may be guided and protected by the Buddha, Dharma and the Sangha. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. And as always, bye bye. Uh, I noticed that Phyllis asked a question. Let me just quickly address this one minute now. So, good morning, Shifu and everyone. If a person killed someone and was sent death sentence, will he be in hell realms after his death? Thank you. Well, um, uh, the, the fact that he was sent for death sentence is, is due to uh, human law. Uh, the fact that he killed someone, uh, according to the sutta we just went through, uh, would cause him to be reborn in hell, yeah. But uh, in various places, it highlights that not necessarily in the next life, okay. If you committed the five heinous deeds, sa fu sa mu sa lo han chu fo shen xue po he he shen, then this is confirmed. Uh, your next life is assured <laughs> uh, in hell. But uh, killing a person. Uh, whether you immediately get reborn in the lower realms in, or rather in hell, uh, that is not, uh, I, I, I don't recall seeing any sutta that states that killing a person would cause you to be reborn in hell in the immediate next life. But it plants a seed for that. So it means that once you reach a critical mass, then you'll be reborn in hell. Yeah. So it could 
uh, it could be a case where a person um, killed someone, but the conditions are not like fully ripened yet. Yeah. Oh, uh, but at the same time, there are also cases where in a sutta, uh, after killing someone, the person is immediately reborn in health. Oh, uh, the important point I want to highlight is, is uh, the fact that the person was given death sentence, it doesn't nullify the karma. Uh, that itself, that is worldly, worldly punishment. Yeah. Worldly punishment itself doesn't fully nullify the karma itself. Uh, oh, yeah, because the, the karmic result of killing someone is not death. <laughs> Yeah. All of us die anyway <laughs> at some point, but uh, death is simply the termination of this life. Oh. Uh, oh. So, uh, yeah, because there are some people who killed someone, right? But never die, ma, never sentenced to death. Ma. Mm. Uh, so does it mean that because you are not punished, so next life, no, no results? Uh, there are still results. Mm. Okay. Thank you, Sufo. Thank you very much. Again, have a dry day ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Sufo. Uh -uh. I was going to say warm and dry day, but I think Singaporeans don't like warm, just dry and good enough. <laughs> All right, take care, stay safe. Bye bye. Yeah. Thank you, Sufo. Bye, Sufo.